Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is John David and I'm the host of the How to Get an Analytics Job podcast. Today we're going to be tackling how to create groups within Power BI. So here's the structure for the video. Number one, Christina is going to walk you through how to create a group within Power BI. Number two, I'm going to talk about the importance of groups, and even share how you might even talk about groups within an interview. And then number three, you're going to see it in action, as I'm going to share a real world use case of how I use groups to address a data governance issue with one of my consulting engagements. Hey guys, Christina here. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, you can go ahead and download the file in the description. Also, feel free to use this data source to practice for the exam if you'd like to do so. All right, so let's jump over to Power BI. Once you have this file pulled up in Power BI, you'll notice how we have several tables underneath our fields pane. For this tutorial, we're gonna be working with our in-stock data. So go ahead and click on that to expand. To create a group in Power BI, you simply need to hover over the field that you want to group in. For this tutorial, we're gonna be grouping by category. So go ahead and hover over category and right click. You should see this pop up. Now you can go to the bottom and select new group. This groups dialog box should appear. Or you'll notice that we have several categories underneath our ungrouped values, including a category for low cost computers, as well as a category for premium computers. So in this case, it would be a good idea to group these two into a single category and call it computers. So let's click on low cost computers and select group. And premium computers, while also making sure that low cost computers is selected on the right and click group. And now you'll see that we have premium computers underneath low cost computers. So you can also go ahead and double click on the title to rename it and we should call this simply computers. So then let's cr click OK to create this group. All right, now let's take a look at what this has created. So before we only had the option of selecting category and sales, where it would give us the five categories with its corresponding sales. Now, however, we can select category groups that we just created and their corresponding sales. And if you put these two side by side, you'll notice how on the right, we've created a computers category that condenses low cost and premium. So now if somebody wants to look at just computers, they'll see the two values summed into one. But if they want to look at both of them, they could also just click on computers and it would reveal to them the category split into low cost and premium. So now let's take a look at how we can create a group, but this time using a dimension. So underneath our same in stock data, we're going to look at our week ID. So let's hover over week ID and right click again and select new group. Now you'll see this group's dialog box where we have our bin sizes. Now this is useful for a situation where you need to map calendar days that wouldn't usually map to the calendar, such as if a company held their report every 45 days as opposed to a monthly or weekly mapping. So we can go ahead and go to the bottom here and change this bin size to 45 days. And we can also rename this to something like in stock report and select OK. So you'll see this in stock report under the in stock data under fields now. And you can select in stock report as well as sales. And if we turn this into a bar chart, 
you can now very clearly see how the sales have fluctuated every 45 days. So now let's talk about the importance of creating groups. Creating groups is a great way to address data governance issues. And this is something that you can bring up in an interview setting. You can talk about how creating groups can address some messy data. The value of creating groups is that it takes a systems approach to addressing a data quality issue. So essentially, within Power BI, you would create a group one time. And any time that you refresh that data, the underlying data source would automatically be grouped according to that group setting. Now, it's not going to be expansive. And what I mean by that is that you're only going to be grouping in that one Power BI workbook. It doesn't span across all of the other departments or other data visualization projects that you might have on tap. Eventually, you're going to want to actually get at the core data governance issue. I would say that creating groups is a short-term solution to some dirty data, but ultimately, you need to actually create the data governance to clean up the data source. All right, so now let me tell you my story about how I use groups to salvage a consulting engagement. Earlier this year, I had a client who hired me to study their CRM data. And for those of you who don't know, CRM is short for Customer Relationship Management Tool. Essentially, that's the data related to their sales and their sales leads. What they hired me to do was to build out a dashboard. But once I started digging into the data, I realized that the data was a total mess. They had 56 different industries. So I couldn't really work with that data point. When you have so many different industries, you really don't have industries. You have sub-industries. So the solution was to sit down with their sales director and group all of those 56 different industries into eight major groups. So those eight major groups were the actual categories and the 56 were subcategories underneath those eight main categories. The reason that we needed to clean up this data was that I had to get a prototype dashboard cranked out to pitch the CEO. If we got buy-in on the project, then we could build out a whole reporting infrastructure for not only their sales department, but also their marketing and their other operations as well. Once the sales director created the groups, I then added them within Power BI. What's great about this is that we could push forward with the project. We're no longer sidelined by all of these different industry groups. This was a key data point that they wanted insight on. Creating groups was the tool that bailed me out of this very precarious situation. If we didn't get the prototype built out, then we wouldn't have the project buy-in. Now, creating groups was only a short-term solution. Eventually, they do need to address their data governance issues. And later on in the year, we actually did dig into that. And what we found was that the data collection process was just not very effective. A salesperson would add in a new client lead and manually type in the industry. The long-term solution was to create a drop-down menu with just the eight defined categories as an option to choose from. This way, we always collect that data point correctly and we don't have you know, a growing number of subcategories that we have to keep adding to those eight major groups. Did you like that? Well, we have over 120 videos on our channel related to not only how to get an analytics job, but also how to be an effective analyst. So hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you want notifications. We post new videos each and every week.